welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we are back on our island survival series and you'll notice that I've added in uh, this very terrible looking river that's quite obviously part of the sea still but <laughs> for now it's going to uh, serve the purposes of a river uh, just for this series and um, we want to be able to drink from this to regain our thirst. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a couple of things in today's episode to kind of work in uh, to coincide with all this. Uh, first things first, open up the third person character. We're going to go into here and we're going to create a little something on our player HUD that just shows that we can do something. And um, for now, what we're going to do is um, we are going to add in a text box. Uh, here we go, text box. And all we want it to do is say, um, press E, and we'll put that in little brackets, to, and we want the next thing to be technically blank, um, but I'm just going to put in for now drink. The reason I say blank um, is because I want it to kind of work dynamically with things like picking up objects, so like pick up stone, pick up um, wood, pick up um, axe, you know. I wanted to basically get the name of um, the item or the action we're going to be doing. Um, so for now, we're just going to have press E to, uh, to drink. And I'm going to set the visibility of this for now to be um, hidden. Uh, oh, no. Sorry. Set visibility to hidden. There we go. And the reason for that is I only want this to show up on our HUD when we're doing something. And the, um, the way to do that is set it to hidden. So, again, click on it. Set it to hidden. And what we're going to do is... Um, when we walk into a collision box, we'll, uh, we'll cast to that uh, player HUD, and then what we'll do is um, we'll have it set to visible or hidden from there. So the next thing we want to do is go into our third person character, and the reason for this is uh, on the event begin play, well, just before we add this to the viewport, what we want to do is we want to promote this to a variable. Um, so that we can get its values from inside that. So change the name to player player HUD reference, and uh, we can actually we want to remove that second pin. There you go. This make it look a bit nicer. There we go. So we're going to get this reference. We're storing this now on our third person character so that we can get the references that are in this player HUD as and when we need them. Um, and in this player HUD, the thing we want to do is we want to set this text box to a variable and we'll call this um, uh, press E. And that's our press E. Oh, uh, maybe add TXT so we know it's the text. Uh, there we go. Press E to, uh, sorry, press E text, yeah. Compile that so it's all up to date. Uh, the third person character is also compiled, so that's good. And what we need to do now is we need a collision box. Uh, and this collision box will run over all of our ri rivers. And what it's going to do is when we are collided with it, uh, we can drink, essentially. Um, okay, so the other way you could do it is you could run a... There's two ways of doing this, actually. But the, the other one would be uh, having this panel be a blueprint actor. Um, and doing a cast from the third person character forward and if we're looking at it um, if we collide with the the, the panel um, we have the ability to drink but that there's two ways of doing it as I say but I'm just gonna do a collision box because it's a little bit easier and it gets the ball rolling um, quite nicely so let's go into my assets no I don't want to do that actually I want to uh, I'll do it in interactables because it is an interactable <clears throat> and we're just going to call this uh, River Drink BP for now. And we're going to open it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in my favorite thing in the world, which is a box collision. 
And um, we're just gonna make it a little bit bigger for now because these things do actually come out quite small. Like so, and that should be fine. And if you click on the box on the right hand side, you've got on begin overlap. And for this one, we will also need the end overlap. And we're gonna be casting to third person character. Like so. And let's copy and paste this up and down. There we go. And we're going to plug both of, oh gosh, plug both of these in. Because we need to know when our third person character is overlapping and ending its overlap. And when we are overlapping, we're going to get our reference to player HUD. Uh, get player HUD reference. And we're going to also, we're going to set... Uh, press we're going to set press e no we're going to get the press e, e text visibility and we're going to set viz ability that's what we're going to do so when we collide when we uh, collide with this box we want to set the visibility <coughs> of press e text um and we also want to so yeah sorry let me start over cast the third person character Get the player HUD reference, get the press to E text uh, variable, and set it to visible. And we're going to copy and paste this into down here. And on the end overlap, we're going to hide that E text uh, text box. This is why I want to change it obviously to be a little bit more dynamics for all pickups because um, obviously it's going to appear and disappear as and when, and we just want it to say what we want it to say. But we'll come to that down the line. <clears throat> okay. So once we've set this to visible, the next thing we want to do is um, enable input to our uh, get the player controller. And then when we're not stood in there, we want to disable input. Uh, and move that target into the player controller. There we go. Okay, and that is on the target is itself. So it only will work when we're stood in this collision box. And the uh, key I want to get is the E key. We'll have to find it. Uh, it is there. So at the moment, all that's happening is uh, we're going to collide in the box. It's going to create that HUD box widget and um, basically allow us to press E when we're in it. Oh, I haven't put one in the world. What am I doing? Sorry. Let's put one out there. I do that every time, I swear. Okay, let's make it a little bit larger. Um, make it so we actually kind of have to stand in the water. So that's definitely not the best. Uh, let's rotate it slightly. You basically want it to be smaller than the water. Uh, otherwise, people are going to just be drinking still on land, and you don't really want that either. Okay, so that looks like a safe area to drink. <clears throat> okay, let's try it again. So it should come up now when we step into it with the pressy to drink. There we go. And we are in the water. We step out. There you go. It is pretty close. I think that's because the water moves in and out. Um... That one's probably not close enough to the shore, but now that we're in there, we should be able to drink. So the next thing we want to do is when we press E, we want to add something to our thirst. So what I'm actually going to do here is uh, on the overlap. So let's make a little bit of space. <coughs> I'm going to promote this to a variable. Plug that in. And I'm going to change this to TPC, like so. And what we need to do is we need to basically get some variables from our third person character. Uh, the What we need to get is uh, get thirst, like so. And what we want to do is um, we want to add something to our thirst and what we're going to do is for now we're just going to add 10 to our thirst now you might want this to be 
uh, more or less, depending uh, how many times you press E, you might want it to be like, I want it to only go up five, you know, make it that they have to really work to get their, their thirst up. And then what we need to do is set thirst. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to get a clamp. We want to clamp this float. So <clears throat> this looks kind of complicated. I promise it's not too bad. Let's bring this down so it looks a bit neater. Uh, let's make it move under there maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, so the minimum is always going to be zero. But we can basically make it um, so that it can't go any higher than our thirst max. So we'll only ever go to like, for example, if our thirst is 100, which it says it is here, it will never go higher than um, than 100 because we have that clamp in place. Um, the other thing as well is you want to do this with the, the reduction of thirst because you don't want it to go lower than zero. Um, and we'll, we'll look at that when we do our health reduction on, you know, no thirst or food, for example. So, for example, here, where we minus one, we probably should have a clamp here. So I'm going to do that now. Clamp float and put the value in. Now, the maximum isn't necessarily important at this point, but uh, I, I think it's still good practice to have it in there. So that the float, whatever happens, the float knows that that's the maximum. And you probably want to do the same here with your hunger as well. Plug that into here. And um, plug that into there. And get your hunger max. And plug that in there. Uh, so this actually automatically improves your... Uh, hunger and thirst because it's not going to go below zero. It's not going to start going to like minus one, minus two, minus three. Um, and then what this will do is that when we hit zero, um, we can uh, basically start to take health. Once we add the health in, we can start taking that health away. So back into here, um, this should now work fine uh, and it won't go over 100. So let's give it a test. So we can see our thirst is already starting to go down pretty rapidly. Um, if we press E, we drink and it automatically starts going down again. Now, there's some buffers we could put into place um, that um, will uh, slow it down a little bit. Um, like, if you've just drank, you might give it like a, a five-second um, buffer before it allows you to um, sort of lose um, thirst again. Because it's quite a kick in the teeth, obviously losing thirst straight away. Um, like this never stops um, so I might actually upgrade this whole thing into a timer event uh, which would be quite good and then we can pause the timer by handle um, when we want to pause the thirst going down um, so that would be something we will look at I think actually in, in a future episode but for now we have uh, an ability to now regain our thirst. So again, if we go over and we press E, it refills our thirst up to the maximum, and it doesn't um, it doesn't lower it anymore. You also might want to add in some things like, for example, um, if our velocity is less than zero, we don't lose thirst because we're not we're not actually like making any movements and stuff. So there's lots of avenues we can take this down and you can uh, make it very complex um, if you build upon it. Um, but at least we're now regaining our thirst for them for the time being. We have a clamp now so we won't go lower than zero uh, on our hunger or our thirst. So we've definitely made some progress today um, and we've also got the Pressy to drink on hub uh, on our HUD for Um So it's looking it's looking good. It's getting there. Uh, as I say, there's definitely some things we need to do to, to kind of really build on this um, this system. <clears throat> and the next thing we want to do is start adding some food in. 
which we'll also do. Um, so yeah, lots of things still to go. Um, hopefully you guys uh, are enjoying this series. If you are, give it a little thumbs up. Uh, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. It's free to do. And you can always change your mind down the line. And for everyone else that's been here since the beginning, thank you so much for all your patience and uh, your support. And I will see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.